For today's video, we're doing one of my favorite upgrades to a boat, and that's upgrading the trolling motor battery to lithium. The main reason we're doing that is weight savings and better longevity out of your motor. Lithium batteries last longer per watt hour than a lead acid battery. With a lead acid battery, you start at a certain voltage and throughout the day, the voltage drops, which means you're losing power to your trolling motor and around 30 to 40% of capacity, it just stops working. With a lithium battery, the charge voltage stays consistent throughout the entire charge level all the way up until about 95% right before it dies. So that means for the same size battery, you're getting a longer runtime and a more consistent power level throughout the day. Uh, at the same time, I'm going to be installing this onboard NOCO battery charger. And since I upgraded the trolling motor, I'm also going to be upgrading the breaker. Uh, right now, the boat came with a 50 amp breaker, and that was for a 42 pound thrust trolling motor. This is a 55 pound thrust trolling motor, and Minn Kota calls for a 60 amp breaker. So we're going to go ahead and upgrade that at the same time. Before we unbox the new battery, let's get the old one out, the wires ready, and then we'll put them right onto the new one. First thing I'm doing is finding the buckle right here. So it's just unbuckles nice and easy. And let's see how much room we have. Okay, so that's good. That was able to pull it over to the side. Now I can go ahead and get these um, bolts off, which will free up the power wires for the trolling motor. All right, so these are 9 16th nuts. Should come off nice and easy. So now we have our power wires disconnected. Let's go ahead and get this battery out of there. Oh boy, that's a heavy battery. Okay. And now let's work on changing out the breaker here. Okay, just a couple bolts. That should be nice and easy. I'm gonna get a cutter for these zip ties. Let's go ahead and cut these zip ties so we have access to the bolts. And there's the bolts on the back end. So these are 3 8 bolts for this setup here. Now I don't know if these connectors are gonna be big enough to fit on the new fuse. So here's hoping they do fit. All right, so we have our old fuse here. This is the resettable 50 amp. Let's see. No, so what we're gonna have to do is drill these out a little bit. Uh, that's gonna be the easiest way to do that. And then that'll allow us to use the bigger fuse here. So I'm gonna go ahead and open these holes up and uh, we'll be able to get this all connected up. All right, so I found an appropriately sized drill bit. Just gonna go ahead and get this drilled out real quick. All right, so now we can go ahead and finish connecting up this breaker. So on the breaker, there's a battery side and an auxiliary side. The auxiliary side is what's gonna go to your trolling motor. So uh, let's get this side connected up first to the battery. This is just gonna now slide right on. That looks good. And now we'll connect back up to the auxiliary side. All right. So our breaker is now installed. That was nice and easy. Next up, let's get the new battery unboxed and installed. For the new battery, I went with the Power Queen. I've had really great luck with them in the past. I've really liked their batteries. So I figured I may as well stick with what works. I really wanted to try out their new Bluetooth version where you can actually check the status of your battery with your phone. Uh, that way you can kind of check your charge level without needing to look at a reader. But unfortunately, they weren't able to send that out for me at this time. So we're just gonna be using their standard 100 amp hour group 24 battery. Wait till you see the size difference on here. Look at that. So that is a 88 amp hour group 27. This is a 100 amp hour in a group 24 configuration. Weight difference, 
I can't even pick this one up right now with the leverage I have, but this one, super easy. So we are definitely gaining some weight savings by going with this battery. Really excited to get this installed. Move this out of the way for now. Slide this down. Fits like an absolute glove. Positive wire here. And then now a negative wire. Okay, so with the trolling motor plugged in, let's give it a try. Oh, we are good to go. Still got power to the GPS unit, which is also running off the same battery. Oh yeah, we're golden. So now that we know everything is working, I'm gonna go ahead and pop the two bolts off. I'm gonna attach the battery charger. That way we will have easy access to lithium battery charging, and then we'll be good to reinstall everything. All right, so this is, just as easy as installing the trolling motor wires, red to red, black to black. Now we can get this buckled back in. Oh man, you can't complain about how light these lithiums are. That is so nice. All right, and last but not least, we just gotta mount the battery charger. So for that, I have two small sheet metal screws. I'm gonna mount it right to the side up here. That way it's out of the way of any plumbing or anything else that would be important on the other side of this wall. All right, with the battery charger installed, the installation of the new lithium battery upgrade is complete. At this point, I've actually had the boat out a couple times now using the lithium battery, and I wanted to record the end of this video after I've had some time to try out the setup to make sure everything works. I am very happy to report that I have had absolutely zero issues. The lithium battery has worked perfectly. I have not even come close to running it down um, throughout a day of fishing, and uh, the battery charger also works really well. So just to show you guys how this all works, now that the battery charger is installed in here, we have a single plug that just comes out, gets plugged in. So now that this is plugged in, the NOCO is gonna take a minute to update the charge level on the lithium, and then if it needs any extra juice, it'll start charging it. The other cool thing is that you can always just, when you get home, plug this right into your boat, and this will maintain the battery as well. So it'll basically just do a very small trickle charge as it sits here, or you can only use it for charging as you need it. Me personally, I plugged the boat in the night before I'm gonna go fishing, uh, just to kind of top it off. I think so far I've had this out about three times in a row without needing to charge it and it was about about 40 percent or so this 100 amp hour battery lasts literally forever uh in my use case now i don't sit and troll for hours at a time with a trolling motor typically i will motor to a spot and then spot lock and then i'll fish and then i'll pull the trolling motor up and then i'll move to a new spot and then spot lock and um, that's the typical use of how i use it and then other times i'll just troll down a shore on a very light setting like maybe one or two and uh you know fish a bank or something like that so so for that type of fishing, this type of battery lasts an enormous amount of time. So I've been really happy with the battery charge level of the system. In addition to that, the NOCO Genius battery chargers, these work really, really well. This is only the five amp version, so it doesn't charge very fast, but like I said, I charge it overnight, so that's never been a problem for me. And in this configuration, it works really well. This is actually a two bank charger. If I find some way to run the leads from this to the back of the boat, I might hook this up to the starting battery battery as well, but as it is right now, uh, that would be quite an endeavor and and I'd probably have to pull off more of the boat than I'm comfortable with right now. So for now, it's only doing the lithium battery. So I'm actually gonna go ahead and just leave this on charge, top up the battery, and that pretty much finishes the installation. Uh, I'll have some links in the description for the battery charger and the battery itself if you guys wanna check it out. As I've said, I've used Power Queen a bunch of times for batteries. I'm gonna be using it in my small pond prowler build as well. So uh, I can really recommend them at this point. If you guys found this video helpful and you want to see more videos like this on this boat and more, don't forget to subscribe. I got a lot of great videos coming out throughout the year. Thanks for watching.